we begin the sermon? Holy God, we thank you for the privilege and the responsibility of carrying your name to the nations. Please help us to carry your name well, beginning with how we live with each other right here. Help us, Lord, to be a community that is clearly a foretaste of the kingdom of God. We ask that you would speak to us now through your word. Help us to hear you, Lord. Help us to be the people and the families and the community that you want us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Christmas will soon be here. The time of the year when we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus. In the first chapter, the Gospel of Matthew talks about Jesus' birth. But before doing so, Matthew begins with this often overlooked passage of Scripture. Would you please turn with me to the first chapter of the Gospel of Matthew? Page 681, and the Bible's provided in the pews. Matthew chapter 1, beginning in the first verse, we read this. A record of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah, the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez, the father of Hezron. Hezron, the father of Ram. Ram, the father of Amenadab. Amenadab, the father of Nashan. Nashan, the father of Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse. And Jesse, the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Solomon, the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam, the father of Abijah. Abijah, the father of Asa. Asa, the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, the father of Jehoram. Jehoram, the father of Uzziah. Uzziah, the father of Jotham. Jotham, the father of Ahaz. Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah, the father of Manasseh. Manasseh, the father of Amon. Amon, the father of Josiah. And Josiah, the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon. After the exile to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Shealtiel. Shealtiel, the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, the father of Abiad. Abiad, the father of Eliakim. Eliakim, the father of Azor. Azor, the father of Zadok. Zadok, the father of Akim. Akim, the father of Eliad. Eliad, the father of Eleazar. Eleazar, the father of Matthan. Matthan, the father of Jacob. And Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Well, so far, Matthew is a real page-turner, isn't it? Matthew begins with an ancestral list that traces one branch of a family tree, a narrowly focused genealogy. Now, the Bible has many genealogical lists like the one we just read, especially in the Old Testament. And it's lists, lists like this that make it so hard for some people to get through parts of the Old Testament, right? In some parts you have list after list. So-and-so was the father of so-and-so, who was the father of so-and-so, and on, and on, and on. Reading these things can be as dry as a crust of bread. Cure for insomnia. So why do we have them in the Bible? Why were the ancient Jews 
weren't so interested in genealogies. Well, part of the reason is that the ancient Jews recognized that a big part of knowing who you are is dependent on knowing the family from which you've come. It helps you know who you are. If I want to understand why my family is the way it is, and I do, then it helps a lot to listen to the stories of my parents and my grandparents and my great-grandparents and so on. Also, as the first note on the note sheet says, if you know some things about a person's family, it will often shape the way you see that particular person. Now this can be good or bad depending on the characters you have in your family tree. For example, I attended the same high school that my dad had attended a little over 20 years earlier. And many of the teachers I had had taught my dad when he was there. And many of the other teachers were high school classmates of my dad. <laughs> so when I went to high school, they immediately knew me, not as Kevin, but as Jerry Slimp's son. That's Jerry's boy. Now, fortunately for me, my dad was and is very, very well liked and very respected in our hometown. So when I went to school, my teachers welcomed me and treated me well, even though they didn't even really know me yet. But they knew my dad, and so they treated me well. To this day, as a matter of fact, I'll occasionally meet people in East Tennessee that I don't know, but they know my dad. And they will immediately, automatically accept me as a friend when they find out that I'm Jerry Slim's boy. Oh, Praise God for that. When people know things about your family, it will affect the way they treat you. And that can be good or bad, depending on your family. For me, it's been good. For my dad, it wasn't always so good. Here's what I mean. My dad has three older brothers. Hasford, it's a real name. Hasford, John, and Jim. When they were growing up, they gave their teachers a really hard time, to put it mildly. Several years ago, my dad told me a story. Actually, in preparing this sermon, I called my dad up the other day to ask him, okay, did I remember this right? He said, oh, yeah, that's how it happened. It's a true story. My dad told me that on the day he entered the eighth grade, one of his teachers was an elderly lady by the name of Mrs. Clark. And on the first day of class, before she had even gotten to know my dad, she called dad up to the front, pulled out a paddle, and said, I've been through it with all of your brothers, and I'm not going to take it from you. And she paddled him. <laughs> he hadn't even done anything. Dad said, he said, I guess I was just guilty by association. Right now, we've got some younger folks in here saying, what's a paddle? <laughs> yeah, you remember, don't you, Cleon? <laughs> I'll bet you do. <laughs> So how many of us remember paddles in school? Several parts of my body remember paddles. Dad uh, was guilty by association. 